Let's get started. I uh, just want to say we've just come through, as you everybody knows, a historic snowstorm. Uh, there are parts of the state uh, for whom this is the biggest snowstorm in living memory, Harrisburg, York County, I think. Uh, I think it's the biggest in living memory in the Lehigh Valley. Uh, Philadelphia is one of the four biggest snowstorms they've ever had. Uh, and it was not only in terms of, it was not just the magnitude, but uh, the rate of snowfall at different points of time yesterday was just uh, remarkable. In some cases, some places, two to three inches per hour. Um, and we were also surprised by uh, the, the weather. It started earlier and farther west than we thought yesterday. Uh, and so we have been and uh, continue to try to, to respond as, as quickly and as effectively as, as, we, as we can. Um, so w we have uh, done everything I think uh, we can to keep the, uh, the major roads open, the state highways uh, are open. Uh, we'll continue to, to work to widen the state highways through Monday and Tuesday, uh, but I think uh, PennDOT is making good progress there. Uh, we'll take questions and, and folks from the Turnpike can answer questions about uh, where we are with the Bedford Somerset, but at this point uh, we have, uh, I think, 20 tractor trailers that are still waiting to move, but the drivers have voluntarily stayed with their trucks. Uh, they're all safe uh, and ready to get, get going. Uh, so um, we uh, have come through this, uh, and I just want to say that, that one of the reasons we were able to make it through and recover so quickly uh, uh, is because the people of Pennsylvania exercise real restraint and, and stayed off the roads when they could, uh, and it made all the difference in the world. It allowed the emergency crews, the local levels, uh, the state levels throughout Pennsylvania, all the affected areas, it allowed them to do their jobs in, in getting the, the roads open as quickly as they, as they could. So I want to thank the people of Pennsylvania for doing what they did uh, uh, and for making this process go as smoothly as it did. So. Uh, Rick, you want to say a few words? Sure, just uh, very quickly, and I, I, just to reemphasize, uh, there's been a tremendous uh, support uh, f across the Commonwealth. <coughs> neighbors helping neighbors, and, and, and you see that in every disaster, and, and, and that's actually fantastic. I think the other message is remaining vigilant uh, from the standpoint, a lot of areas are still in that response mode, a lot of people are still digging out. Um, you still need plow trucks to, to escort ambulances and such. If you do not have to be on the roads, please stay off the roads. But uh, uh, just an overview, uh, real quick, uh, we have currently. Why don't you in introduce yourself? I'm sorry, I'm Rick. I, I should have done that. Thank That's okay. I'm Rick. Thank you. I'm Rick Flynn, the uh, director of the Pennsylvania Emergency Management Agency. The uh, mm -hmm. county emergency operations centers. There's 18 of them. We're starting to see them uh, starting to be demobilized or, or end their operations. Uh, 20 emergency declarations from the counties and over 211 municipal declarations uh, of disaster emergencies. Um, <clears throat> You know, we talked a little bit, uh, our primary focus yesterday was uh, the, the center of gravity was focused in on the turnpike and as the governor pointed, tremendous success of taking care of everybody and that was our primary focus. And uh, with the uh, small number of tractor trailers uh, uh, left, uh, they're being taken care of and, mo and moved out. Uh, we had two shelters open. Uh, and uh, they were both in uh, Bedford County associated with the Turnpike incident. Uh, 216 personnel um, were, uh, m individuals were stayed in that shelter. They're all gone. They left for the day. And then 200 of the uh, individuals from the Turnpike stayed in uh, local hotels. Um, and uh, again, um, uh, Chairman Brown is here with the Public Utility Commission, but statewide there are only 689 customers <coughs> out of serve, uh, out, that do not have power, and that's primarily in the Pico area, in the, in the, in the southeast Pennsylvania area, uh, with uh, Philadelphia having 284. And I will tell you, on, as we say on a blue sky day, that's normal. Uh, so to, for this uh, to be able to have a very significant event uh, with the power outages, tremendous, uh, tremendous uh, from that standpoint. We're still activated in the State Emergency Operations Center. We're going to continue to do so. We're going to contact each county that's been affected to determine what their needs are. We still have uh, National Guard uh, troops on state active duty, and uh, <clears throat> we're working with, uh, uh, again, th about 326 Pennsylvania National Guard members, uh, Air and Army, are, are collectively working and ready to respond. Uh, they've received over uh, 19 mission assignments, meaning that we gave them 19 missions to perform yesterday. Um, we're going to work with the counties, do an assessment county by county to determine what their potential needs are 
and anticipated uh, uh, guard uh, resources or any other resources to do what we have. The primary emphasis that they have right now is getting plowed out in their streets, getting ready for schools. We, we, we can make an assumption schools, some schools will be closed, some, a lot of schools will be on delay, uh, but we're coordinating and, and working any kind of support we have can uh, to provide to the counties. Thank you very much. Okay, questions. <clears throat> surprised you the most with this? Well, as I say, there were a number of surprises. The magnitude of the storm, this is the biggest storm this part of the country uh, has ever had. Uh, and uh, so that was one. Second thing was the speed of the, the rate of snowfall. Uh, so we were having a tough time keeping up with the snow as it was coming down yesterday. Uh, crews work throughout the night and, and so expressways are open. Uh, secondary roads, the state roads are open to one and a half, two lanes. Still some uh, require some, some work on the shoulders and we'll keep doing, doing that. But now that the snow has stopped, we can do that. But during the, while the snow was coming down, that was, that was tough. And then the third thing was, as I said, we, we didn't expect it to be as far west as it was. And, we, and it started, I think, about six hours earlier than we expected it to, to start. So uh, there were just a lot of surprises. Uh, it, it was an emergency, uh, and, and our folks you know, kept uh, up with the, the, that emergency as it unfolded as, as well as we could. And we, we will have learned some things. We're going to get together uh, this coming week and sit down and, and uh, talk about lessons that we've learned and things we can do to, to improve on what we've done this time around. And the message of Pennsylvanians going forward, I mean, they might see the roads <coughs> seem relatively clear. I mean, there's some blacktop on 83 on the way here to still stay off. What's the... Yeah, I, I mean, on? exercise restraint. This is the weekend. Uh, if you can, stay home because it, it really helps the, the crews uh, uh, do their work uh, unencumbered by, by traffic. Uh, so that made a big difference yesterday. The, the, the people of Pennsylvania... Uh, really contributed mightily to, to what we were able to do and, and uh, to the extent they can all of us can continue to do that today uh, that'll make the recovery even even uh, quicker so it, it allows the, the plows to, to plow it allows them to, to lay to continue to lay down the brine which is why uh, expressways like 83 uh, are down to the the pavement um, so if Pennsylvanians can continue to do what they did uh, that would be great and as I was coming here today a lot of people out digging out their own driveways and sidewalks. Anything else? What about the turnpike situation? Do Pennsylvanians feel like the state bungled that? I think uh, to the extent there were people who experienced hardship, uh, we, we, we need to figure out how to do a better job there, and, and that's one of the things we're, we're going to do. I think uh, statewide uh, we did a, a good job but there's no question that for the people trapped uh, between Somerset and Bedford on the turnpike um, that was uh, something that, that, that we're sorry that happened so let me let me turn over to the turnpike and we're, we're I think at the point where we can say things are a lot better sure thank you governor sure. <clears throat> I'm Mark Compton the CEO of the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission and we will do an extensive uh, after action review to take a look at how this started, some of the calls that were made out of my office, some of the things that perhaps we could have done a little differently. And we'll also take a look at our, at our response. But I must tell you, with over 300 people that responded to this incident, both Turnpike and, and our partners, I'm not sure I could ask them to do another thing. I'm tremendously proud of each and every one of those folks who worked for us. And there's an old adage that says, don't ask someone to do something you don't think you could do yourself. Well, as we watched those folks clear uh, uh, an estimate of over 500 vehicles, I'm not sure I could have done what those folks did. So as it relates to an after action review, yeah, we're going to take a look at all those things. But as it relates to the folks who responded, I'm not sure I can ask them to do, a, to do another thing. Um, we are going to have the road uh, open sometime by mid-afternoon. Uh, so we're, gonna, we're in the process of clearing those remaining uh, 20 vehicles. I know there's a, a, a lot of folks who are looking to get to some of our wonderful ski resorts, and we're going we're gonna to get the, the road open so folks, folks can do that. And we should have an estimate here by, by noon as to when exactly we'll be able to open. But I assure you it will be sometime, sometime today. So what went wrong? That's what we're going to take a look at through the after-action review. When you're in a section of the roadway that's very mountainous, 
you're in a section that's a, a, what we call cattle shoots because of the fact that it's in a construction area. And on a good day, that's very narrow because of that setup. So we're going to take a hard look at, at how these tractor, tractor trailers got together, what was the, the word on, on if they should or shouldn't have been there, and the timing of that, of that message. And if it's in a construction zone, should they have only been in one lane versus the two lanes because of the, the wider lane and the left side is, is wider. So we're going to take a look at all that and we'll have a, a full report. It'll be exhaustive and we'll spend, some, we'll spend a lot of time on it and make sure if there's anything we could and should do differently, we'll make that part of the next, the next process. Obviously, this is a lot more snow than we've seen in this area in a while, so a lot of questions are being thrown out there about where all this snow is going to go. Um, have you all yeah, that's going to vary. Where the snow is going to go is going to vary from municipality to municipality. Uh, on the state roads, we've been uh, plowing it to the side of the road. Uh, in cities, uh, each of the cities uh, has their own uh, place to, to take the snow. Obviously, it becomes a, a real challenge in a street, in a city street or a, town, a borough street. Uh, they have to sometimes use front loaders to get the, the snow onto a, a dump truck to get it out because you can't just push it onto the sidewalk then people can't work so can't walk so uh, each each municipality has their own plan for doing that they've been they faced this before and they will continue to do that some of them will take longer than, than others to get out we we have the state has has offered uh, full support uh, when cities and other municipalities have problems uh, with the equipment that has broken down, uh, they need extra help. Uh, we stand ready to, to assist. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much.